Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Sujit Vasireddy, and I'm going to talk about the impact of patient HM on neurology. So, a life full of unconnected events without any ability to form memories is no life at all. Memories allow us to build our story and in turn our identity. The current understanding of formation of memory and retrieval of memory is a complex mechanism and it is a result of decades of research. The, in the current memory model, there are three main classifications today. One is the sensory memory, followed by the short-term memory and the long-term storage of memory. The sensory memory refers to the retention of memory coming from the senses. It has three different types of sensory memory. The haptic memory is the touch, the iconic memory is the, the sound, and the iconic memory is, is through images. So these senses gather the input and in turn goes to the short-term memory storage. The short-term memory so storage has many components, but there is an important subtype called working memory. The term working memory refers to a system that provides temporary storage and manipulation of the information necessary for tasks, such as maintaining a conversation. A simple task such as maintaining a conversation is actually a cognitively demanding task because it requires language comprehension, learning, reasoning, and maintaining attention. So in turn, the, the short-term memory interacts with the long-term memory storage. It sends information and it can add new information. And at, at the same time from the long-term storage, you, we can retrieve information into the short-term memory storage. So the long-term memory storage stores information for a long period of time. It can be as long as the lifetime. We think neocortex is the primary storage for the long-term memory. This information can be retrieved unconsciously. It's also called as implicit memory. For example, it recognizing faces that we have seen from the news in the past, or it can also be a conscious decision that is called explicit memory. The, so I'm going to talk about this patient called HM. HM is, is an acronym for Henry Molaison. This is the case from the 1950s and it influenced our current understanding of memory enormously. So let's go into the case details. HM is a mechanic who, suffer, who had suffered from minor epileptic seizures from when, when he was 10 years old and he began suffering se severe seizures as a teenager. These may have been the result of a bike bicycle accident at the age of seven. And his first minor seizure was at the, at the age of 10 and major seizures occurred after the age of 16. For roughly 10 years, that is by the age of 27, he had become incapacitated by his seizures. And despite high doses of anticonvulsant medication, he could not work or lead a normal life. HM was treated by William Scoville, a neurosurgeon, and he offered HM an experimental procedure that he had carried out previously in psychotic patients. And the surgery that was proposed is bilateral partial median temporal lobe dissection. And this was done with the approval of the patient and his family. And HM was the first epileptic patient to undergo this pr procedure. Previously, the this procedure was performed only on psychotic patients. So what is done in the procedure? So a seahorse shaped resection was done around five centimeter of resection was done. So this five centimeter resection is actually from the results from, an, from MRI of HM done in 1993, but the surgery was done earlier in 1953. So the MRI results in 1993 studies showed most of the uncus amygdala, anterior hippocampus, hippocampus and anterior complex was removed, but part, excuse me, sorry about that. Parts of the posterior hippocampus was largely, was largely spared. So this was the MRI. So you can see the comparison between the patient HM and the healthy 66 year old male. So the V stands for lateral ventricle and A is amygdala. You can see that this is the healthy healthy 66-year-old male. At the same time, patient HM was 67-year-old here. The hippocampus is resected. There is no anterior rhinal complex. 
So what were the outcomes? HM developed minor seizures later on, but the neurosurgeon realized that his patient had difficulty to form new memories. So he, he collaborated with Brenda Milner. The patient is extensively studied by Brenda Milner for decades through robust experimental psychology. This that act that paved way to cut to the current memory models. It is important to put things in context. By the time Milner started studying HM, the anatomy of medial temporal lobe is poorly understood. And the terminology like hippocampus complex or hippocampal zone were used to identify the area of damage. Milner work is a landmark study in many, many various ways because much of the memory research were the result of brain dissections, but Milner devised psychological experiments, which was quite novel for its time. Milner and Scoville work became the most cited neuros neuroscience paper with more than 2,500 citations and is still cited frequently. The importance of HM is that he not only motivated the development of animal model of human memory impairment, but it, this case study also led to subsequent delineation of medial temporal lobe anatomy. As described in the next slides, he gave insights into the function of medial temporal lobe and the larger matter of how memory is organized in the brain. So the early description of HM suggested four principles about how memory is organized in the brain. In the years since HM was described, each of these ideas have been the topic of extensive ex experimental work. The first is that the role of hippocampus in forming new memories. HM developed severe anti anterograde amnesia. And there are multiple accounts of this. He once ate lunch in front of Milner, but 30 minutes later he was unable to say whether he had eaten. He would do the same jigsaw puzzles or read the same magazines every day without ever apparently getting bored and realizing that he had read them before. Hachem loved to do crossword puzzles and, he, and thought that they helped him to remember words. Hachem could not learn new words, facts or faces after his surgery. He can have a meaningful and intelligent conversation, but he would forget who he was talking to the moment the person walked away. From psychological test, the HM can successfully identify famous people before the surgery. He could recognize people that were there in the news. But after the surgery, he had difficulty in recognizing the faces. But he can actually have a meaningful conversation. But let's say you went to get a coffee, he would introduce himself again and politely ask about your details. So this showed, now we know hippocampus is responsible for formation of new memories and also retrieval of memories from the past. And HM, in HM, hippocampus was resected. One of the possible explanations is this. And there is also an interesting case where, in one scenario, HM was able to recall who assassinated JFK, but JFK, the assassination occurred at a time later after the surgery. One of the theory was proposed was that this evoked an emotional response, which led to imprinting of that memory in HM. So the second principle is that intelligence and personality were not primarily influenced by hippocampal complex because there was no observable difference to his personality or to his intelligence. In, in fact, he scored 112 points on his IQ after the surgery compared with one or four previously. And in this, after the surgery, there was an improvement in arithmetic. The third principle is that existence of working memory. As I've mentioned before, working memory is a part of the short-term memory. HM had considerable capacity for, for sustained attention, including the ability to retain information for a period of time after it was first encountered because he could, he could maintain a meaningful conversation. In a test where he exhibited intact digit span, it's the ability to repeat back a string of six or seven digits. 
but the information remained available so long as it could be actively maintained by rehearsal. For example, HM could retain a three digit number for as long as 15 minutes by continuous rehearsal. Yet, when his attention was diverted to a new topic, he forgot the whole, in, the whole event. In contrast, if the material was not so easy to rehearse, for example, faces or designs which are non-verbal stimuli, this information slipped away in less than a minute. The, th the fourth principle is that not all memories are formed in the same way. Because when he was introduced to the, to the motor learning test, this is the mirror drawing test. In this test, a cardboard is placed such that the subject can't directly see the paper and the subject is asked to draw a double con contoured star on a paper using the mirror to guide the tracing correctly. And this is something even normal subjects require practice to do it accurately. HM acquired the mirror drawing skill during 10 trials. He actually got better at each trial. He, and he was not doing the same mistakes as done before. Consecu consecutive days after the test, he was able to draw this, the star accurately, but he could not remember that he practiced or learned the task before. This demonstration provided the first hint that there was more than one kind of memory and motor skills, motor skills must lie outside the province of medial temporal lobe. And we now recognize this as a procedural memory. So it is important to recognize the contribution of patients like HM who underwent these dangerous operations, then allowed researchers to study them for the rest of their lives. Our current understanding of memory is much more nuanced, but behind the data and theories, there are patients like HM. Susan Corkin, a prominent researcher experimenting on HM, reflected this. There was a man behind the data, Henry often told me that he hoped that research into his condition would help others live better lives. Thank you.